Hey, I'm Michael Barney with Catalytic and uh, definitely feel like I'm amongst friends. Um, I know a lot of you. Um, and that's from uh, the connection between Catalytic and Field Glass. I just think it's worth noting. Um, the uh, CEO and founder of Catalytic was the uh, co-founder of Field Glass. Um, and, uh, he started Catalytic uh, in 2014 after selling the company to SAP. And the point of that is um, we really understand your business um, and we understand technology. So um, I thought it'd be fun to share with you a little bit about what we've been up to um, since Catalytic was founded. So um, kind of on the, the heels of what some of the other presenters have said, look, no one's debating um, the need to automate. Um, what I want to point out, though, it's not always about just freeing up bodies, even though that's admirable and, you know, it um, certainly has, you know, financial consequences. But there's a lot of other, I think, really important aspects to how automation can help your businesses beyond, you know, the obvious stuff like freeing, freeing up your, your team to do more meaningful uh, things versus dealing with, you know, highly administrative, low value work. Um, you know, decreasing time to fill is pretty admirable. That's a good thing to do. Um, and as you look at streamlining your branch operations, um, obviously there's a lot of benefit, but also a lot of it's about the user experience. And it's not just for your own people, it's for the people that interface with your business, including your clients and um, hiring managers, candidates, an example. Um, and it's also about um, looking for ways to be more compliant um, and to do that automatically and just delivering a more profitable experience for your business. Automation um, can, can hit on all elements of that. And that was my point of this, is I wanted to, to get us beyond limited thinking about what the automation impact is to your business, because if the business case doesn't hunt, I would argue, don't do it. Um, so I think it's important to have a, a healthy appreciation for, for, for where it can kick in. Here's an interesting, and I hope refreshing, honest take on automation. Um, and this isn't catalytics numbers. This is like Bain and Gartner. And here's the interesting fact that there's no debate that everybody in the world's trying to do it, you know, or you risk the, you know, going the way of uh, Sears and Blockbuster versus, you know, the way of say an Amazon that was digital first. So pretty clear consensus. Everybody wants to do it. It's in, if it's not in your boardrooms, it's certainly being discussed and happening with your clients, but here's the reality. It's not going so well. Um, if you look at the percentage of companies that are actually achieving um, the outcomes they set out to do, it's like single digit. So that should be a wake up call and really, I think, begs the question, well, why? Why isn't, and by the way, I'm going to use these two terms interchangeably, digital transformation, meaning digitizing your business processes and operations and automation. They're kind of one and the same. Um, but the reason it's not working, um, you know, quite so swell is a handful of things and in no particular order. Um, number one, it's like really expensive, not only to build and stand up automations, but to maintain them. No one ever talks about the maintenance side of it, but your processes are really dynamic. They change all the time. And um, you need to, you know, you need to be uh, equipped for that unless you have an army of bot developers. And that brings us to the next big issue. It requires developers to build and scale automation. And uh, that means you have a couple choices. You can either go lean on your IT organization, which I'd imagine that doesn't have a lot of ample extra capacity. Um, number two, you can stroke a check to an outside consultancy, you know, WidPro, Cognizant, Accenture, a smaller boutique consultancy, or you can go enter the war for talent yourself to go get a bunch of developers. So that's, th those aren't good options. The third thing I wanna point out is everybody thinks, yeah, we'll just automate the whole process. What they don't realize is the role of people don't go bye-bye. We're having all these chat, chat bots and RPA bots and completely replaces the role of a, of a person. Look at staffing processes. There's ample um, opportunity for people to remain in the loop. Most of these technologies have absolutely no notion of how to keep a human being involved in the automated process. And then the final thing is another fallacy. Everybody thinks, oh, one technology and I'm done. I got it nailed. There's lots of technologies you may need to bring to bear to your process, depending on what you're trying to digitize. I can think of lots of, 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 of things. How about electronically signing a document? How about using AI like OCR to scan a resume? How about using some of these new fangled, really cool AI technologies like predictive modeling to make, you know, using sentiment analysis to, to make predictions. Um, so, um, 
the downside of that is that means you have to go source, excuse me, source multiple technologies and proliferate them through your infrastructure. The reason I drag you through this is I wanted to give you an appreciation for why we built what we did at Catalytic because we figured, hey, if we could pick this stuff off, we might be onto something. So here's what we did. First of all, and while I was trying to tell you about Field Glass, just to establish the credentials that we know how to build software and, and SaaS platforms. Um, so we are no code. No code means you don't need developers. You can literally put it in the hands of the business. It helps if the people that are going to be building in Catalytic are naturally curious. It helps if they know the process, but they don't have to be developers. And that is a big, big differentiator versus RPA. Um, the second thing is we um, – uh, enable the platform with embedded AI and machine learning. And I've already given a couple examples and I'll give you some more. And finally, ultimately, here's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to just automate a task or, or, or replicate a keystroke. We're trying to connect all of your people, all of your data, and all of your current systems. So if you have an investment in Workday, if you have an investment in ATS, um, if you have an investment in an ERP or front and back offices, we're not here just suggesting those go away. We're providing what I'll call the automated workflow or the lubrication to put automation between all those systems and then layer in AI where it makes sense. So it's a holistic end-to-end -end automation approach that keeps people in the loop and leverages all your current systems and processes or that of your customers. Very different than what you might have heard to date. So this is intended to do two things. Number one, establish a little street cred because we're a startup. Um, pretty well funded. Intel um, has put money into us as well as NEA. Um, so here's an example to, to kind of bring some of these points home. Bosch, I think SAP's second largest client in the world, a huge RPA shop, um, just passed the 2000th process automated on Catalytic. That's a lot of bots, guys. And now you should be asking, how the heck did they pull that off? Pretty good example that they didn't need to go to IT to build it. They federated the model. They trained people around the world in the business, gave the platform to, you know, Joe user and said, knock yourself out. And this is the result. It's not the wild, wild west. They have a lot of governance in place, but it's to demonstrate the point that you can build automated processes affordably and quickly. And I think boss is just a really relevant, credible example that I wanted to share with you. Okay. So let's talk specifically. Just roll your eyes over this slide. That's the whole point. These are all examples of staffing and MSP processes in production with our customers. And the ones in bold, our customers said, Michael, when you make this slide, we'd suggest you highlight those because those were so significant. They were so core to our staffing operations. We spent so much time and money around these alone. It justified the entire catalytic deployment. So it's a function of a process. It's really, really broad. Some of them are simple, quick little wins and some are really big, you know, meaty ROI intensive. Um, it varies. So I'm just trying to get you to think about where and how you could apply this. And these don't all apply to your businesses, but I'd imagine a lot of these are relevant. So I don't have time for a demo. That's actually my ask if you have interest. Let's just get away from the PowerPoints and, and I'll take you through some use cases. A huge shout out and thank you to Talent Wave. Most of my customers are extremely stealth about their use of Catalytic. They just they see no advantage in telling everybody they're using it. Talent Wave's allowed me to share this one. Talk about a process ripe for automation, onboarding. It's meaty to say the least. It is highly variable depending on not only the client, the skill set, the line of business that the, the talent's being placed to. And um, it takes a ton of time. In the case of Talent Wave, they had, uh, you know, up to 65 different manual steps that people and systems were involved to getting people onboarded. And um, the other thing that's really important, onboarding isn't done in a vacuum. People are involved. Candidates are coming in. Assets are being issued. Meetings are being scheduled. Um, uh, information is being facilitated. So we automated 90%. Notice I didn't say 100, 90. Because the other 10%, human beings are still involved and need to be. Um, and the impact was extraordinary. You know, 5x the number of onboards handled with the same amount of people, decreasing a lot of manual steps. And then the stuff that never gets a shout out for automation, the efficiency, the customer experience, 
the, the decrease in error rates were all elements of it. One little piece of, um, that I thought would be exciting for you to hear about, AI, because at this on this example of onboarding, you're probably thinking, AI, where, where does that come in on onboarding? Um, for some of our clients, they're um, using predictive modeling and sentiment analysis. Once the uh, worker is onboarded, they're five days into the assignment, right? Onboarding's over. And they're showing up in their inbox with a very simple, benign, open field that says, hey, Maurice, just curious, man, how's it going? He types back and says, you know, actually not very well. I haven't met my manager and I eat lunch by myself. We run predictive modeling, run sentiment analysis, and then determine to what degree we think they're a flight risk. Wouldn't you want to know that? You just spent all this time getting this talent in the seat on behalf of your client. Wouldn't it be cool to use AI to give you some inkling as to whether this person's going to jet and then do something about it? The point of this example is your customers expect, in my opinion, for you to use disruptive, innovative technology. What I just described my customers are putting and embedding in their RFP responses to, to win business. So um, I hope that helped in terms of just a verbal example of a really cool um, use case that sure involves people um, as part of it. I'm going to wind up for you. Um, the opportunity to work with this is twofold. The first is just first and foremost, just use the platform for your own internal operations and possibly extend them to your clients. You might even be able to monetize that. Um, and I can share examples of autonomous, anonymously um, how my clients are doing that. They're building practices um, around extending their services around our platform. But um, so that's the first and the most obvious. But also, um, if you have any interest in extending your services or getting involved in some type of, some type of a partnership with us to monetize the relationship, we would uh, more than welcome that. And again, that's you know, a little bit down the road, but the door is open if you wanna have that discussion. Um, I promised Maurice to keep it short. Um, I really I hope I intrigue you. Um, we're sitting on a pile of staffing company use cases and um, would love to do a couple things. Schedule a demo so you can just flat out see it. And I think the light bulb will go off. I'm more than happy to do, you know, a no-cost trial. You'll have to invest, though. I need 10 hours of some person's time for, you know, a week or two, and we'll build a couple automations with you. Um, but you should do the building, not us, if it's as easy to do as I'm saying it is. So um, with that, a huge thanks. Um, here's my contact info, and I uh, look forward to hearing from you. Maurice? All right, Michael, extremely impressive. <clears throat> Zero to 2,000 bots at Bosch in the span of two years, and all the other things that you described is really uh, – amazing and you guys are making great contributions